The UK is entering a cost of living crisis with the biggest squeeze over the past 60 years. Petrol prices are rising, energy bills are unaffordable, leaving potentially millions in poverty as the energy price caps rocket from £1,200 a year to £2,450. In this video, we'll explore the cost of living crisis and what you need to know to understand why the prices are going up and how we've ended up in this mess. We're going to split this video up into three parts. Firstly, defining what the cost of living crisis is. Secondly, understanding how bad it could get in the future. And thirdly, looking at what you can do to really try and secure yourself and gain some extra money during these difficult times to try and beat some effects of the cost of living crisis. So point one, what is the cost of living crisis? Well, millions of households all over the UK are bracing themselves for rising costs in fuel, in energy, in food, and many other aspects of life, especially from next month on April the 1st, where energy bills and prices are going to be going up from an average of £1,200 to £1,900, and that will again further go up in October later this year. When you put all of this together, it means that the UK is going through one of the worst financial squeezes in more than 60 years. And the Institute of Fiscal Studies have looked into the data and seen that over two and a half million families are really going to struggle into the poverty line by spring this year. According to the Office for National Statistics, inflation was as high as 5.4% in December 2021, as well as the average gas bill rising by 54% from 1200 to 1900 later this year. When you combine this, now mixed in with the Ukraine-Russia situation, the UK have just announced they're going to be removing our dependence on Russian gas and oil by the end of this year. Now that's really going to hit the bottom line because all of these costs are going to rise. Gas prices have been rising anyway over the past year. Now there are a few different reasons behind this one of which is our wind production. Now, wind usually in a good year makes up about 25% of the UK's energy production. This is even more tricky when there's a natural shortage of gas all around the world. Now, we've had cold winters, which means there's been way more consumption in Europe, and the existing pipes that we have from Russia to Europe and the UK at the moment have been flowing at about half the capacity. Now, usually they should be flowing at about 60 to 70 billion cubic meters a day and last year it was about 40 million cubic meters a day but this has gone as low as 20 billion cubic meters a day from Russia to Europe. Now Russia are claiming that this is because of production issues and that's why there's not as much gas coming through the pipes. However some people are saying from a political perspective that Russia could be doing this to try and bump up some of the prices and also encourage Europe to push ahead with the Nord Stream 2 project. But whatever the situation whether that's true or not with the recent situations and tensions in Ukraine, Germany and Europe have now announced that they will be no longer supporting Nord Stream 2. So this has somewhat backfired on Russia, but it also impacts us day to day because it means we're going to have to get all of our gas from somewhere else and therefore we're going onto the global market which is more competitive and we as a country and Europe have to pay higher prices which means household bills are going to continue to go up. And if you're wondering about coal and nuclear that we still have in the UK, well the coal output now is really, really small. They've been trying to phase out coal power plants for a very, very long time. And from a nuclear perspective, we're not quite there yet. We do have nuclear plants like Hinkley, but the output of these aren't yet at full capacity. So it's gonna take a few more years to get them to the point where they can support a good percentage of the UK energy consumption. So part two explores how bad could this really get? And the first big question is, what constitutes this as a crisis? Now. Aside from all of the scaremongering headlines that you're going to be seeing over the next few months into the next year, I would define a crisis in the UK in terms of the economic side of things for households is where people in normal households are forced below an acceptable standard of a poverty line, which means they're going to struggle and have to make sacrifices to decide between do I put the heating on or do I buy more food so I'm not hungry. In theory, if wages increased at the same rate as inflation, then there wouldn't be as much of a crisis because even though the cost of living is going up and fuel's going up, if our wages went with it, we'd just be absorbing those same costs of inflation. But we all know since 2008, the huge reality is that wages are not and have not gone up. Therefore, the cost of living has increased, but our wages have been pretty much the same. In a recent tweet, the ONS did a study and found that the lowest and poorest households in the UK are going to struggle more disproportionately compared to those in the top 10%. They found that overall, those in the poorest 10% spend about 54% of all of their income 
on essential costs like maintenance, travel, food, housing and accommodation, compared with those in the richest 10% who are spending about 42%, which is 12% less, on all of the essentials like travel, maintenance, housing, food, all of that stuff. The energy price cap is going to be going up on April the 1st, 2022. It will go from about £1,200 up to £1,900, which is an extortionate rise in energy bills and is going to hit households really, really badly. But then again, in October, it's expected to go up again to what we anticipate will be around £2,400. Now, that's a little bit further in the future, and that's currently the prediction, but the thing is, it's still going to go up, whatever that figure is going to be in October later this year. We've all been protected by the off-gem cap at the moment, which is why we've seen a lot of energy companies go bust, because they're paying these larger wholesale prices, but they can't pass that cost on to us until the price cap is risen by the energy regulator. And because of the Ukraine-Russia situation, it means that as Ukraine are one of the big exporters of grains, oats and wheats to the global economy, none of that is going to be available, which means things like bread, pastas, cakes and pastries and anything that uses flour and grains is going to go up in price because it's going to be more competitive in the market and we'll have to pay a higher price for what is less supply. The problem with oil is that the prices are already starting to skyrocket because of the Ukraine-Russia situation. The annoying thing is, is that nothing's actually happened to the supply yet. So all of these prices are going up already purely in anticipation for supply issues later this year. And this has meant that this week, and I suspect through the rest of this year, prices in the forecourts are going to go up considerably. We're already seeing diesel at 170 pence a litre and petrol is already reaching well above 165 pence depending on which station you go to. The government have also looked into the idea of a three-day working week. Now this has been done previously in history in 1974 when there was a coal miner strike and the whole of the UK started working three days a week, pubs were shut, all of the TV stopped broadcasting at half ten at night, but the government have said and the business minister has been very clear that that will not happen this time round. And I think this is really good news because after just going through and making it to the end of a global pandemic, the last thing we want is pubs to be shut, shops closing early and the UK essentially going into another lockdown. So I'm glad that that's not going to be happening and it's not going to be a reality. But it means that there are going to be tough times ahead. National insurance is increasing, fuel's going up, the price of oil is going up. Everything is going to be increasing, which means we are going to be squeezed even more than ever. In part three, let's explore what you can do to try and mitigate some of the impacts of the cost of living crisis. Now, it may sound a little bit cliche, but what we've seen in history, when we go through times of struggle, there are certain groups of people or businesses that really start to flourish and prosper. And at the moment, I think it's going to be those who are business owners or the businesses themselves who are going to do reasonably well. Some of them will definitely struggle, but others will see higher profits because of inflation, meaning what they make today means they'll make more tomorrow and the day after because of all of the inflation and all of these prices going up. But I'm more talking about the large corporations here, not the everyday small bakery on the side of your neighborhood. It's more about the types of businesses that are invested and listed on different stock exchanges. For those of you that are already invested into stocks and shares and property, I think those will do really, really well. We always see through these hard times and due to the inflation, prices go up, which means the share prices go up. So those that are invested into stocks and shares and have assets will see gains on those over the next few months and possibly one to two years. I suspect we'll start to see that once companies start releasing their either end of the half one results this year or getting towards the end of the year when we're seeing the full year of 2022 results that's when we'll start to see a lot of interesting increases now if you're fortunate enough to have some spare cash and you are currently not investing in stocks and shares then it's worth thinking about whether you could invest some of that money into the stock market and some big companies in the FTSE 100 or the S&P 500 to try and ride some of the wave and mitigate some of the impact but that's not a foolproof solution Investing comes with risk and you need to understand the pros and the cons of it and you need to make sure that if you are putting money aside into investing into an asset, you need to be looking at it from a long term perspective. So you need to be investing your money for a minimum of three to five years to ride out any waves or dips because there's nothing stopping the market from taking a tumble this year and then going up the next year. So if you put money in this year and need to access it, that means that you might need to then sell all of your stocks at a loss and therefore you've got less money. There is a famous saying that when others are fearful, you should be greedy and when others are greedy, you should be fearful in terms of the whole stock market and property market in the UK and in America. So 
At the moment, I think we're definitely in a phase of when others are fearful, you should be greedy, which is why you should be thinking about how do I invest my money to try and mitigate some of that impact of rising interest rates and inflation. The reality is over the next few months, it's going to be very, very tricky. We're all going to be squeezed and the cost of living is definitely going to be going up. Now, there are some ways to try and mitigate this. And I believe that there are some winning situations. And in times like these, investing your money into companies can sometimes be a good thing because inflation pushes up profits and profits profits mean that the stock prices of companies that start to go up. So I also did a second video here that will really, really help you about understanding and learning all about stocks and shares ISA in the UK and how you can use them to try and beat inflation and mitigate some of these circumstances. So click here, check out the investing video, and I will see you in the next video.